Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of Tech Today. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi. What's up? Did did you say nothing? Did someone say nothing? Yeah. All right, we're gonna plug in the showstopper of 2023 exclusively on Tech Today. The nothing phone 2 here to unbox of course this is the same show where you caught that exclusive conversation with Carl Pay of nothing everything about nothing being unpacked on that show but now we're going to unbox the nothing phone 2 and tell you whether this is a true game changer to do a standard review I'd tell you everything about the phone but we've had the exclusive opportunity to spend some time with Carl before the mega launch and when he talks about design and really making tech fun again I think he means business literally if you look at the box of the nothing phone 2 it is a statement in itself right in terms of packaging it's very fresh very new yes it comes with the ejection device, a USB-C to C, a small manual, the fonts being used, the use of white, and the huge focus on sustainability. Even the external cover mentions what the life cycle carbon footprint is all about. So I think that is very refreshing to see with the nothing phone to box design. But then of course, that's not what we're unboxing on tech today. It is the nothing phone two. Yes, it looks really good, it feels a lot more premium than the last one. And that's not because we know everything about what's under the hood. In terms of design, let me tell you a little bit about the Nothing Phone 2. A 6.7 inch flexible OLED display with LTPO. So if you want to conserve battery and it's not a very graphics intensive or display intensive task, the refresh rate of this phone can go down all the way from 120 hertz to 1 hertz. That is, well, refreshing to see the first premium feature of the Nothing Phone 2. Now obviously it comes with Corning Gorilla Glass HDR10 Plus with 10 bit color depth. It's got an outdoor full screen brightness of a thousand nits of course with HDR, peak pixel brightness of 1600 nits, there's a 240 Hz touch sampling rate, a haptic touch motor and this time it comes with IP54 splash and water and dust resistance so that's a start with the nothing phone 2. Now there's so much to be said about the phone, we can talk about the glyph interface, we can talk about nothing OS, these are all things which are very different, radically different from any other Android device and of course from iOS devices as well. But very quickly, before we get to the fun parts, under the hood is a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. And that's an interesting choice for a processor. Every other smartphone manufacturer is talking about a Gen 2. Top of the line, we got a flagship chipset. Even Apple talks about the prowess of its own bionic chip. How come Carl decided to go with an 8 Plus Gen 1? Interesting choice, and that was one of my questions when I met him exclusively a few days ago. Here's what he had to say. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, mm -hmm. a good battery, and there's a huge focus on the cameras. Mm. You said, well, cameras are getting slightly better, but when we compare it to the phone one, I think there is a monumental change. But I want to understand the rationale for you to go with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip mm -hmm. instead of the Gen 2 because you're a marketing genius but in consumer tech everyone says flagship top of the line uh, top dollar with the flagship chips you've taken a conscious decision why so I think this might get a little bit philosophical but I think as a, as a tech company um, what are you actually here for I think you gotta either enable consumers or users to do what they couldn't do before mm -hmm. or you enable them to do it faster than before or um, more cheap than before. Yeah. Like you just really got to push things forward as a tech company. But I think a lot of companies that make smartphones, they're just buying all the components from the supply chain around them and then integrating them. What's the value that they're creating? If they don't have a unique point of view mm -hmm. on whether to take technology and just buy the latest components, that's not a real business. I don't think it's a real company. So for us, it's about picking the right type of ingredients to make the overall package really good. Mm -hmm. 
you, you, might, you might say that we don't have the latest, uh, uh, highest spec processor. Right. We still have a really uh, capable one in the H M one Plus from Snapdragon. Um, just like when we cook a meal, we don't throw all the ingredients onto the table or mm -hmm. into the pot. We pick the best combination of, of, of stuff. So, um, you know, on the phone one, we used a seven series processor, like even, even lower spec processor. It was really controversial at that time. Mm -hmm. How can you launch a new phone? Uh, the processor is old, it's not the eight series, but actually we made it perform better than a lot of phones with the eight series right. because it's not just about the hardware. A lot of it is about the tuning of the software and how you really make use of the, mm -hmm. of the hardware. So I think people got to look at the whole picture and not just at one spec. Well, that just might be a stroke of genius in a market like India. If it keeps the prices down and delivers the same sort of performance that you need on a daily basis, we thought, well, it might sound great in theory, but what's it like in practice? Because we've been using the phone for a while. I switched on Asphalt, which is a very graphics intensive game. We've tried, well, Genshin Impact. Of course, a gaming mode comes on as soon as you switch it on. And not even for a minute can you tell what's under the hood. Well, there's so much to say about the new Nothing OS on this device and of course, the redefined Glyph interface, which I have slowly started getting used to. And honestly, if it's not there in my standard, well, iOS device, the iPhone or on one of my foldables, I might start missing this. So, and that might be an incentive to enter the Nothing ecosystem. And imagine that's me saying that. With the phone one, I honestly didn't understand what all the fuss was all about. But now the fact that you can use this Glyph interface to do a bunch of things, I have lots to say about it. One thing I do want to talk about is that the Phone 1 and now the Phone 2 especially, given it's a lot more premium, it's got all these features, is being compared to the iPhone. Even in our conversation with Carl, we spoke so much about how he's used Apple devices over the years. He built OnePlus from scratch. And now with nothing, he's trying to make tech fun again. But there's one thing that I think the Phone 2 can get a little better at. Look, you have to invest a lot of money in manufacturing a device like this, even here in India, to make sure this transparent design actually works, even for the nothing earbuds or the ear stick. To have that transparent design is an investment. You have to be very meticulous about it. And there's a whole process to making it happen, to make that tech fun again. Well, I really think that the device looks premium and you keep it anywhere and it is quite the eyeball grabber. And of course, the Glyph interface is something that attracts a lot of attention. The user experience is very intuitive. It's very smooth, of course, with all the hardware enhancements. And the fact that they've kept it to a bare minimum, also letting us do the key thing in Android, which is customization. So if you want to change app labels, you want to switch the grid design, change the widget size, color themes, and really make your interaction with your phone a little more friendly. So what nothing's really managed to do is to tailor make your user experience. It's very intuitive, it's very smooth. On the phone, do something that I like personally happens to be how they've dealt with the weather widget. You click on it right over here. And if you look at this widget very carefully, you'll see that the icon changes like Tetris blocks depending on how bad the weather is getting. So it's rainy days here in Mumbai and of course in New Delhi. And you can see that it is cloudy, not with a chance of meatballs. And then when you open the weather app, it is something we've never seen before. It's powered by the same service that powers all other weather apps, AccuWeather, but it's just put together so well with air quality, UV index. When we're talking about the rear camera setup, it's a 50 megapixel main camera and then a 50 megapixel secondary ultra wide camera. It's a twin camera setup and you don't have well, of course, the third camera. So they've done a bunch of things with AI, the buzzword of 2023, which really uses that technology for motion capture, when you're detecting a moving object, for action mode, and of course, clearer shots at a distance. They've also developed something called 2X Super Res Zoom, which will actually preserve the details of a shot. In terms of the front camera, they've tried to make it bigger and better. And honestly, it's quite clear. Let me just take a quick selfie. Well, as you can see on the screen right now, not too much over-processing of the image like a lot of other Android phones. It is a very good shot. Kind of reminds me a lot of the shots on the Pixel, but maybe I'm just hallucinating. It is a very, very accurate shot. Even the details in the stubble, in the beard, and the way it is masking out the outlines, it's doing a stellar job at it. Well, now let's talk about the elephant in the room, 
the glyph interface, or let me correct myself, the redefined glyph interface with essential notifications. And that is key to the phone too. But let me confess, I wasn't entirely sure what the glyph interface would be useful for in the phone one. Yes, you unbox it, you have a look at it, and it seems great. But what real use cases does it have in your everyday lives? I think nothing did get back to the drawing board and figure out how to make this so damn useful and it is. So in a world that's going increasingly digital, there's a bunch of problem statements every other minute. And then if technology can find a solution for it, I think that's the best way to manage the mischief. That's what the phone 2 does and does really well. The Nothing team seems to have gone back to the drawing board and said that we get too distracted often by social media notifications and our friends in our pockets are turning perhaps into our foes. And if you can come up with very nifty, useful ways using hardware, software, all these technology hacks to make our entire interaction with this device a lot more efficient and well useful, that's what this glyph interface will do henceforth. Well, let me explain. If you have an essential notification or when selected contacts or apps would send you something, maybe a message or would be calling you, that light will shine persistently until you've opened it. Now, if you just want to go into DND mode, you don't have those rockers over here. You turn the phone around and this is the flip to glyph. That means light only notifications on this device. Now, that becomes quite a useful feature, especially when you want a digital detox. Also, if you just want to perhaps take a video and turn the glyph light on. And if I were to just take a photo like this. Let's see how it turned out. There's a lot more light on the face. If you're on a dark setup, well, it does that job as well. Another really cool thing you can do is use Glyph Composer, which means create your own ringtone. And if you're into music, you will love this. I'm just gonna very quickly play this for you. I have set my own ringtone right over here. And each key that I'm using on it corresponds to a different light on the Glyph interface. Well, as a budding musician, I love the fact that you can play around with that. And then, of course, if a bunch of budding musicians get together and create that and then it could become your ringtone, well, that's a nice little community that nothing is actually tapping into. I don't know how much nothing is going to market this to consumers, but it is something that you would know if you tuned in to our exclusive with Carl Pei last week on Tech Today. But let me fill you in. Third party integrations. What if you have maybe a Zomato delivery or an Uber that you're waiting for and you don't want to keep seeing your phone and you thought Dynamic Island wasn't very useful or notifications on iOS are not very useful or the way the others are doing it as well. What if you don't want all those distractions but you still need to know if you're in a meeting if your Uber has arrived or if your delivery is here, well, then you can rely on the Glyph interface and customize it and then rely on that status bar to know exactly how far away your delivery is or how much longer your Uber will take. Well, now that everyone knows how the Phone 2 will be priced, the Nothing Phone 2, nearly half the price of an iPhone with all the features that you need to get the job done. A verdict, honestly, a company which is brave enough to take on the Apples and Samsungs of the world, create something new, invent something, and as the tagline, make tech fun again, is definitely a brand that we want to track and are curious about on Tech Today. And with the Phone 2 being an entry point into the ecosystem that they'll be working on, with that attention to detail, with nothing OS, with the Glyph interface really serving a concrete purpose, I think this is not nothing, this is something.